Hi there everybody, it's Suzanne in Ohio. I have a project to share <coughs> excuse me, today. I've been making some needle books and I wanted to show them off today and show you which ones I made first and what I'm working on now so you can see how they've evolved. So the first one I made is this one. This is mine and this is this one has a backstory to it because it's for a friend of my sister's. But this has been a fabulously exciting project for me. I did my research online on Pinterest, blah, blah, blah. I knew nothing I saw in there was going to suit me because I feel like, not to criticize anybody for anything, but if you're a serious sewer, um, those little tiny things that... I found that it's not for a real sewer, I don't think. Now, you be the judge of that, and I'll show you why I say that and what I evolved to kind of accommodate uh, a needle book for someone that really, really needs it to function. So this is the first one I put together. It's totally made by hand, no machine at all. And I used what I had at hand immediately at first. And the first thing is the foundation of it. The back and the front is just a piece of a bark cloth that I found at the thrift store. Or my girlfriend gave me one. Anyway, it came from the thrift store. Piece of old doily. I had my mushroom appliques that just lay in at hand. And I used them. And this, all this... Uh, polymer and alcohol ink dyed lace. So I made the outside, I made the inside, and then I put them together as if it's a book. You'll understand that more in a minute. On the front I just sewed, embroidered the word sew and mounted it on top of a compilation there of lace. And I had these famous quotes printed off from a project of last year and this is a Mark Twain quote uh, and so I just put it on there. I, I just couldn't waste any time. I'm thinking I've got to have something that functions for me because I'm tired of digging down in the corner of my uh, little shoe box, you know, plastic shoe box to find what I need to work. So let me first see if I can get you down just a little closer and I'll open this up and so the it's just all fabric now but it is uh, does have foundation in between the layers. I can't get my camera to come down it just doesn't want to. Alright so since the first day I put this together I even added to it because I realized there were things I need to have with me that uh, and I made a place and a way to carry them around. So let me move this. That's out of place. But the basic construction is an outside and inside and this is a swinging pocket and it's on hinges here. So let's just start here. What I did was take some uh, heavily felted wool uh, that was off of some thrift store clothing that I had from years ago and then a foundation here and then I have in this little plastic bag pieces of my straws because when I'm embroidering and I want to do the cast on stitch I need them little pieces of straws and I made these um, leaves I call them of wool and that accommodates straight pins just perfectly. Now I'll tell you right off the bat what I learned. If your wool is too loose your needles will just slide right out. So I went back and I added some different layers of some heavily felted wool so it was a little tighter. So here's just some of my general needles these are all straight pins of sorts and over here on the first side of this fabric you know wool page um, I have 
some different places just to stick different needles according to what I'm using. Now this little magnet, I'm going to lay it aside and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But the whole page is made out of wool with even some ugly wool down inside it to pad it. I created this little pocket and ended up I didn't need it so much as a pocket, but these are all needles and these are all needles up here. And I need plenty of place for my needles because in any given project I'm using two or three different kinds. And so I want them all where I can see them. Now this is by no means all the needles I own. Um, what kind of sewer would I be if I didn't have a stash of everything? But this is what, I, what I'm working with at this point. When you turn the page over, uh, I did create another little pocket in here. And my mistake was that it was too easy for things to fall out of. So I've got extra pack of needles and pins and I've got them safety pinned in there so they don't fall out. Here's my little lasso for uh, in case my I need to thread a certain kind of needle. So that page is very functional and you'll see that I took that idea and evolved it into the next needle books. Over here I gave myself a couple little pockets and I gathered them at the bottom so they would flare out because I knew specifically I wanted to put my beeswax in there and that worked fine. Up here in this one I have a little piece of cardboard just a scrap of cardboard and on this straw right here I have twisted onto the straw some of the strapping tape that I use to make my own homemade um, Thimbles. I work best with that. I also found a little pair of folding scissors at the thrift store and they just slip right in there. And I tied them with some yarn and I have the yarn safety pinned on here. That way if I want them loose I just unpin it here and I can stretch them all across the table and use them as needed. Now this is functioning quite well for me. I might make myself another one in the future, but for right now, I just love this little thing. I've come to be endeared to it already. And I did put some elastic on here that loops around the buttons on the front, but I find I don't use them. So I'm thinking about just taking them off um, and thinking about what I would use as a closure. I'm thinking about making something like a, a bag that just lays open and closes up. I, I don't know yet. But anyways, that's the one I'm using. And I just love it, even though it's kind of corny, you might think. But boy, does it function well for me. Now this one was the takeoff on the other idea. <coughs> and we had, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> my sister had gotten a bag of scraps from her girlfriend. She used the bigger scraps. Let me get a drink of water. <coughs> Doesn't that always happen when you turn the camera on? She used the big scraps to weave the girl a rug. And then there was a whole bunch of small scraps. I looked at them and some of them were really pretty and the thing that shocked me was this hand dyed wool because I was with her at the shop when she bought this wool. Now I don't know if she used what she wanted or just didn't get around to making anything out of it. And boy I'll tell you I bought some that day myself <coughs> and we paid dearly. Uh, for that hand dyed wool at a quilt shop. So I thought, oh, what can I make Connie? So her piece of flannel, this is flannel here, the colors in that and the wool all matched and I pieced and parted this and put it together hodgepodge for her. And so let me show you what I put in it for her. First of all, I just sent, uh, used the stem stitch and stitched on the word so. 
and when you open it up, um, I printed off that ancient Chinese parable that talks about thread. And you might want me to read that to you because where else are you going to see it if you don't know about it? It says, an invisible thread connects those who are destined to meet, regardless of time, place, or circumstances. The thread may stretch or tangle, but it will never break. May you be open to each thread that comes into your life, the golden ones and the coarse ones. And may you weave them into a brilliant and beautiful life. So I had printed off some of those for these uh, needle books and I stitched one of those in here for her. Now the first thing I did was make a pocket and then I put her piece of dyed wool on the front of it as a double pocket and that pocket is big enough to put some skeins of uh, you know embroidery floss or whatever you want in there and I stitched this up kind of tight and narrow there so it would hold uh, the seam ripper in there. My sister bought her these things for this book. I put, I had some bulky yarn and I stitched it on and threaded it through these spools of thread and I just tied them on there because she can switch them out. Now you can take a hold of your thread and just pull on it and it will twist on that spindle of yarn and you can use it right out of there but you can switch it out it it works quite well over here I pleated uh, some wool and st sewed it on there as those stand up sleeves and you can see I've put some um, pins in that that kind of those kind of sleeves just work wonderful um, I cannot get my camera to move in any closer but there's the sleeves and how they work they're standing up and you just it really is easy to just jab your pins in there so that just oh I left this little flap and I hid a little uh, another piece of wool under there I was trying to use up all her dyed wool and that's a little cruel needle for cruel right there so the page is hinged you can see the hinge down in there just stitched it to the center of the book and you flip it over and over here I created another little pocket out of wool and a little loop for this contraption which is a magnifying glass and a seam or um, a needle threader so you can just pull that off the bottom I'm not going to do it right now and use that a tighter piece of wool up here for more pins more needles whatever you need over here on this side this little pocket holds this seam gauge and I gave her a little pair of scissors in this one too and these are bandage scissors and I thought well how cute they cut real nice but she is a nurse as well as my sister is too so a ba pair of bandage scissors was just perfect for her I sewed a little flap of a tight wool right there for extra pins however you want to use it it works really good on the back um, I rolled down the top of this piece of wool and put this on here for her a pocket so that roll down top makes a pocket fairly tight and it won't stretch out as much and then of course embroidered her name on this piece of wool and when I put it down I use different embroidery stitches running stitch fly stitch chain stitch and um, okay I know the name of that one I can't think of it right now um, anyways just she's already seen it without any of the stuff on it she just loves it but I wouldn't let her take it home until I show you guys here on the video now my project evolved and um, I have four completed ones and one that I'm putting together so stick with me if you want to see how these go together in the meantime I'm just going to go through all of these separately just to show you a little bit about how the ideas involved and what I've uh, 
how I think I've made them better as I went. All right, for starters, the outside of this is this uh, was a little embroidery cross stitch that I found at the thrift store. It was in a hoop. I took it out of the hoop and squared off the sides and laid it on a foundation and added some scraps of doilies and dresser scarves. And then I did a little free motion running stitch embroidery here and all of this is stitched down quite well. So when you look at it this way, it opens up and you have basically the same elements but done totally different. This is a piece of an old dresser scarf with the original crochet on the bottom of it. I firmly stitched that down and then I created two little pockets here um, on top of it and a piece of wool for um, your needles. This also has this hinged pocket and on the pocket I put another pocket and I fronted it with uh, these little cross stitches that I found at the thrift store. This one doesn't have a place for me to stitch this quote down, the uh, ancient Chinese proverb. So I just put a copy of it in there in case anyone wanted to make an extra page or you could make a tag, like a name tag on one side and that famous quote on the other. You could uh, include it with the journal. The page is actually made out of a small piece of uh, quilting, free motion quilted thing I found at the thrift store and I cut it up. Over here is my leaves. Let's call them leaves, stand up, whatever, uh, for straight pins. And then this side is backed also with a piece of an old doily and I left the lace on it and it hangs down out of the book. This is a, a a circle piece of wool, real tight for needles, and this could be for needles or pins, whatever you want to use them for. Okay, so that's the next little one that came <clears throat> in my thought processes. And then I kind of got serious and moved on to this one. Now this one, um, the, the front panel, which is the decoration, was a puffy thing that I had made a couple years ago, last year I think, and I just used the whole thing and stitched it down on three sides and it is a pocket on the outside. Now on the front of this I had used a Susan Winget print and bordered it off and collaged it with different scraps of laces and things. And this one has a scripture on it because that's what I had put on that and my thought back then was to put that or make that like a mailable type of valentine. So I used it. And then over here on this side, I just used a piece of a doily and stitched it down and it just coordinates beautifully. Now these two pieces of fabric coordinate wonderfully because this also is a Susan Wing at print and the bird is a Susan Wing. So that worked out good for me and I just thrilled, I'm thrilled with that kind of thing because here I'm still living in at my sister's house and I don't have all my supplies with me. So it works out. When you open this one up, let me get the whole thing in camera here. When you open this one up, um, it's much the same but a totally different look because of the fabrics and so forth. Now my sister had a couple old white doilies, uh, not doilies, these would have been table napkins and we just took them to a piece of cardboard and I mixed up some ink that matches with the background and I sprayed them with alcohol ink. And so here's my um, little leaves, I call them, I think that's the proper name for them, for sticking in pens. And I made a pocket out of this and I stitched on the ancient Chinese proverb right here. 
and you can well tell that that's a piece out of a Battenberg type doily and it was just so pretty I stitched it on the front of this pocket. Now the swinging pocket in this one blends in so well it might be hard for you to tell but it is a swinging pocket and what I ended up doing was slanting the front edge down so that the user could better get their hand in there readily. But it is deep enough to hold anything. It, it can hold anything. Small project that you're working on, spools of thread, scissors, more pens, anything. And on the back side of the swinging pocket, I also stitched a long narrow pocket and that could hold a seam gauge or just whatever you need for your project. Over here a nice piece of felted wool and again another pocket. So I used the entire uh, dinner napkin in this project. I think I only had a tiny little sliver of it left and the colors bl blend beautifully. Now the way this one went together gives it the overall look of a little bit more refined probably for somebody that's not crazy about the shabby chic or the handmade look such as mine which I love but this is a little bit more refined and I bordered it off all the way around with a quilt binding as well as this part right here on the pocket and that gives it a neater cleaner look so <clears throat> then I went from this one to this now I have to show you both of these at the same time because I was faced with a dilemma. I had little scraps of this which were beautiful. Not many scraps, just a few. And I had this puffy. It's a complete creation all in and of itself. I had made that as a, a hanging puffy and I thought oh, I can use it as the front pocket but I had nothing to match either one of these elements. This scrap of fabric or this. I had nothing to match. So here's the idea I came up with. And so you'll see how this came together. So what I started out with was a base of canvas. And I thought well I have this, this, I've got a few pieces of this but nothing to match. So I stamped it with acrylic paint. Um, what I did was I, I have very few stamps here too because the rest of mine are in storage but I had a couple cling stamps and I just put the basic elements of the colors out on a paper plate and dabbed my stamp. I dabbed with blue, I dabbed with teal, I dabbed with white I d and then as I kept dabbing the colors blended and ended up matching just perfect the basic focal point. So that's how that came about. Now let's look at it on the inside and I also stamped the piece that was going to become my inside. You'll uh, see more of that in just a minute because I have one that is not yet put together and I want you to see how they go together in case you want to make one. So here's my stitch le uh, leaves for straight pins and again I didn't have any place to stitch this famous quote down so I put one in that pocket in case anybody wants uh, to use it and then I made a pocket out of that little scrap and I had some alcohol ink dyed lace that matches the shade of brown in this print just absolutely perfect. So a couple pieces of that here and there. And then the swinging pocket in this one again is a slanted front and that's all padded. That has padding in it, uh, quilt padding. And on one side I put, a, I left this little dragonfly visible, had a little piece of blue felted wool. I bound it with, uh, with the quilt binding. Uh, uh, along the side and I made this one wide so that it would stabilize that page. And it's hinged in there three places with um, hemp. 
um, just a beige hemp because it's very strong and it's double. So it could take years of flipping it back and forward before you'd have to worry about wearing out those little hinges. So <clears throat> on this side of the pocket, some felted wool with some colored dyed wool in the center. I would use that one for needles. And then over here, this is just a decoration because I wanted to repeat the bird and I quilted around him so he's a little puffy as well as here's the butterfly that came in those scraps and that's just a decoration also. You can add anything you would want to to these books, but as is, they would function beautifully for a serious sewer who needed to have their tools and things at hand or wanted to have a, you know, a take along project. So that's the blue bird one. And then back to the dragonfly one. Again, that's a pocket right there. And when you open it up and look at the outside, because this was created all as one piece, I mixed up the teal colors in the dragonfly, the greens and blues, and and stamped with my cling stamps. And then I thought, well, I need to carry that color of orange a little bit through there. And it is kind of very tangerine kind of orange. So I just mixed some up and dampened some of the places in between to make it look all cohesive. Now I did quilt all over this entire piece. And in the areas where the stamp is, I did a running stitch and followed some of the swirly twirlies. Over here in the orange, I did a seed stitch in orange with orange embroidery thread. Out here on these extraneous areas, I just did a cross stitch of a light blue because there's light blue on the focal point. And that just gives the most beautiful tactile look. I just love this one. And so when you open it up, get it situated here, I had a scrap of this and the colors went. And this teal print fabric went. And so that's how I've done my inside. So um, I back this fabric. This is not just one layer of fabric. This has stabilizer like a heavy pellon in the middle and it has a lining. So I created that pocket, turned it inside out, stitched up the edge and then sewed it on. Uh, this one sewed on with machines. So you've got a sturdy pocket there. And then the hinged page uh, again has a slanted opening and since that inside of it was plain canvas I decided to use another scrap of this and I created a semi little pocket there and then the big pocket your hand can go all the way down in. So a little piece of tight that's a double layer tight felt uh, for needles and then you flip it over and there's several layers here and I wanted, I have learned you've got to have that tight enough to catch your needles. Other th otherwise they slip right out, as I said before. I did find a place in here to put uh, that famous quote. I mounted it on a piece of wool felt and then I stitched it on by hand and left it as a pocket. And up here is all the leaves for your straight pins. And that is just a beautiful uh, needle book. Now it's larger than most but for somebody that wants to roll their projects up and carry it along with them you can just roll it up inside close it up and slip this down in a bag and it's just really really functional as well as pretty. So I have one more here thing to show you and this is how they go together. So if you want to, first of all, if you have any questions, leave me uh, a comment and I'll get back to you. <clears throat> but if you want to try to put your uh, one together for yourself, please do that. Now the last four that I've showed you and this one 
w those first four are on my Etsy site and I'll put a link below and this one will be on my Etsy site real soon. Now again all I had was a couple scraps of fabric which was my jump off point and it's this little print and the basic colors in this print are burgundy and kind of a dusty rose color. So I thought okay I don't have anything to match that either. So I got out my paints and my stamps again and I stamped my swirly stamps. Then I found a couple scraps of my alcohol ink doilies and I stitched them on top. And this thing is fairly quilty too. Uh, if you see any strange little threads, I don't know how good your camera is, everything on this project is still basted. I will take the basting out after I sew the front and the back together. That's what it looks like now. So this is the page that I stamped, let me get here, uh, that will be my inside. Now I haven't mounted anything on it yet, but what I've done is I did my running stitch and followed some of the twirly whirlies of that stamp and that gives it a little quilty look. This is all basting thread if you can see that and when I'm done I will take that out. I have threads everywhere. So let me tell you how I'm going to go about creating the inside of the needle book. So let's lay the front aside for a minute and let me show you all the pieces and parts. So I have learned to give it some thought long before I sit down to put it together. So the first thing I've done is I've created what will be the hanging pocket and it will hang from this side. So when you first <clears throat> open the book, the first thing you'll see is this side and I created a pocket out of a little scrap there. Now it's still open at the bottom because I will bind that off with a quilt binding as I did the top and then I will put a wider binding up along this side and that with stabilizer inside of it by the way because that's what really gives it some strength. A very heavy piece of pellon and then when I put those three little hemp hinges on there I'll never have to worry about anything wearing out or pulling out. So you would open up your book and this would be the center hinge pocket. And I've got that pinned right now, but I will unpin it and show you that what you want to do is anything you want on the outside of this hanging pocket, you have got to do it now while this hinged pocket is still open and flat. So I have hand stitched that little pocket on and I hand stitched with embroidery thread that little piece of uh, wool felt. And it might be polyester felt. I don't know. I've got a mixture of both. I don't care what it is as long as it's tight. Now the reason people say, oh you have to have wool felt. Well back in the day you did have to have wool because their needles were not stainless steel and the metal would draw moisture, fabric would draw moisture and it would rust their needles. Now it does not matter <clears throat> because number one you're not going to have it in a log, log cabin where there's a lot of moisture and your needles and pins aren't going to rust because they are uh, they're either coated or they're made out of stainless steel. So decide what you want on the outside of your hinged pocket, the swinging pocket and put that on before you decide how to fold it up and make it the inside pocket. Now let's flip this over as if you just opened up the book and the first thing you're going to see is this side. So I have some pieces and parts created here that I'm deciding where to put them. Here's my little piece of felt that I have pleated and I may mount it right here and put the one for needles right below it. That would work good because you open up the book and there's your pins and needles on the same page. That's a possibility. 
I had this big space over here, so I had a piece of fabric that matched, and what I did was create a double pocket. It has stiff pallon on the inside of it, and I am here's my quilt binding along the sides, and I'm getting ready to fold those back and stitch them. So both sides will be bound, and then when I've done that, I will probably lay that pocket in here, and I will stitch it down by hand with some embroidery stitches. So that gives me a double pocket here and here. And then I created this little pocket uh, that just says so, and it would look good mounted right up here. Now, when I decide exactly where to put these things, not this, because I will stitch that in the book the very last thing. But when I decide exactly where these go, and they might go right here, I don't know, I will then take this piece and the front, and I will put them back to back, and I will stitch them together. So, the reason I have so much basting on this is this piece of canvas I used was a tiny bit out of square, and I can't stand it, so I basted everything. Now, what did I baste? I basted the canvas, a piece of felt, and a piece of medium weight pellon, and I basted that all together, and that will give me the quilty look that I want, and the padding. And then I'm going to take these two pieces, and I'm going to line up the outside edge of the canvas just perfect, absolutely perfect all the way around, and I will either bind it off with a quilt binding, or I will just stitch them together and leave the raw edges showing. So I will take you back to the other needle book just for a minute to show you what I mean. This was lined up just perfect, and I did two rows of running stitch embroidery all the way around through all the layers. It shows on the inside, it shows on the outside. But because it's so fairly close to the edge, you can't hardly see. You'd have to look hard to get in there and see if you could see the felt or the pale on. But I like raw edges, and I'm thinking this one, because it is so puffy, it will look better with the raw edges left and a running stitch of embroidery all the way around the edge. So that will be the fifth um, it'll be the fifth uh, needle book on my Etsy site. Now, you can go to my Etsy site and just look at pictures if you want to um, about how I did different things. Like this little panel, I just stitched it down by laying some pearl cotton that matched, and I couched it in with brown, and then I cross-stitched all the way around the edge of this piece of brown fabric with, which acts like a border. Let me see if you can see that up close. That was fun. It gives a nice effect in real life. It's just so cute. All right, so um, again, this is what this will look like with all the pieces and parts on the inside, and that is going to make a beautiful needle bar. So you've seen a lot of different ideas, everything from my little funky personal one, which I love again, I have to say, I love the darn thing, um, and it, because it is kind of, it just so happened, it's kind of fallish, I think, winter colors, I think I'm going to make myself another one for spring, and see if I can kind of invent anything else new, and, uh, you know, because necessity is the mother of invention, hello. Like, for instance, this pocket is really too high to the top of this. I should just unstitch that and get rid of it and make a shorter one, but I won't. I'll leave that because it was my first effort, and I'm real happy with the way it uh, services what I'm doing. All right, so needle books. Oh, my gosh, so fun. 
Oh, here's the idea that I wanted to mention to you. Underneath here is a little piece of magnet, and I've got a magnet right there. I'm going to develop something where I have a magnet, a big magnet square about the size of a, a business card, where I have it underneath a piece of wool, and it helps hold your needles there in case one of them would come loose. So look, check back later after I develop that idea. I'm working on it right now. And this was a happenstance. I had this, these two magnets somewhere else, and they just happened to land on that. And then I had needles and pens just start sticking to it. So it was a happenstance idea that I think I can develop into something very functional. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're a sewer. Go to my Etsy channel and check out those needle books. They would make wonderful gifts for yourself or somebody else. And everybody needs a needle book. And here's something interesting. I have talked to uh, some of my friends that are sewers. And I said to them how much I'm enjoying this needle book. I said, have you had a needle book all this time? They go, no. So you can't believe how many serious sewers don't even have a needle book. But boy, this has solved a lot of problems for me. Okay, folks from Ohio, I'm signing off here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some ideas. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.